Yo, welcome back. This is Do42, back after my Christmas break away. I uh, had a nice few days uh, catching up with my family in New Zealand, so now back to it and decided to make another episode. I really, really want to get started with the uh, rotary craft. So today what I thought I might do is just get the very basic canola oil uh, thing happening. And um, we're going to need a couple of uh, different things to get that happening. There's a few ways you can start canola oil. Uh, the way I'm actually going to use today is to feed off my uh, RF power that I've got here. Uh, so I might have to, yeah, I might have to just move around a few things uh, to get that done. Um, but we should be able to get something happening. So uh, let's basically get started. Uh, what's the first thing I'm going to need? I think in our magic little book here, if we scroll through, have I gone past it already? Yes, I might have. We're looking for that. There we go. That thing. The work table is the first thing we're going to need. So we're going to need some bricks, crafting table, uh, HSLA steel, stone slabs. Uh, now, you might remember last time I did make a bunch of HSLA steel. Uh, so we've got that already. We're going to need a bunch of that. Um, we're going to need some stone slabs and we're going to need some bricks. Now, bricks are made from clay. So I'm going to need to cook up some clay. Uh, four clay, I think. No, why is that not working? Are we on? Alloys only. All right, so all smelting. Put those four in there. There we go. Uh, so we're going to need, yep, one of those. We're going to need some stone slabs. Cool. Uh, now, what was it? I was looking up some diamond stuff before. Uh, so we're going to need, oh, it doesn't keep the page. That's kind of annoying. There. Uh, so there, HSLA, redstone, and of course the table on top. So let's just grab some of that. So we need, oops, too many. The crafting table, the bricks, the redstone, stone slabs, and HSLA steel. And there is our work table. So what I might do is, there looks good. I might just put that in the ground like we do with everything else. Cool, so there's the work table sorted. Let's throw those back in there. Put some of this stuff away. Cool. So now what we're going to need to do is make the engine that we're going to need. So under uh, engines, maybe. That's a bit further on. Production machines. Here we go. Obsidian factory magnetostatic engine. So this is what we're going to need to do. We're going to need some base panels. We're going to need the diamond sharp. That's going to be fairly expensive to make. Uh, copper, silver, lead, and a redstone reception coil. So, what we're going to need is a bunch of stuff. So, we're going to need a little bit of silver, I believe, a little bit of lead. We're going to need to have potentially some gold, potentially some copper. We're definitely going to need some diamonds for that shaft. Uh, redstone reception coil. So, reception coil, redstone reception coil. Yes, that's a gold in the middle. So, let's... Make that one up first. Now we're going to need to make uh, some panels. So if we put three across like that, no. No, maybe it has to be on the bottom. Hmm. Don't know what that is. So let's have a look. Uh, they are called base panels. Base panels are made with three HSLA, uh, not on the work table, not on the work table. They need to just be over there as normal. Okay, so there's some base panels. Uh, now I believe, yep, that will get us the diamond shaft unit, but if we do this, I know, we can get the diamond shaft core, which we need as well. Excellent. So we have, we have a diamond shaft unit left over, uh, which we can use a bit later on. Now, we were making the magnetostatic engine. That one there. 
So let's actually I might use uh, this one's in the work table, right? So this is why we need to use the work table. So we have that there, that there. Uh, can we use the question mark? No, we can't. Oh, that's not so flash. So lead, silver, copper. So we're going to go for lead, silver, copper in the middle, the reception core there, the shaft core there, and then the two base panels. And now we have our magnetostatic engine. Excellent stuff. So that's how we're going to get some of our uh, shaft power out. We're also going to need a grinder, which is a lot easier for me to look up in NEI. Oh, we're going to need some more base panels. We're going to need two saws and an HSLA steel gear. The gear is pretty easy. The saw is just another two gears with some steel. So we're going to need three oh look at that three gears gears is what we need so i think that's back over on this table yep so three gears now two of them need to be saws so those are the two saw gears excellent and now we need the three base panels so we're going to need some more of those and now we have to move over to this one here to get base panels the gear the two saws, and I think there's two of those. There we go. And there's our grinder. Excellent. Now, there are a couple of other things that we're going to need. We're going to need to get a screwdriver. Now, we're going to need the rotary craft screwdriver. So, that's an iron ingot, a stick, and some planks. That's very, very easy to make. Uh, so, let's grab the stick. Actually, we'll grab all of that just in case. So, we just need uh, well, HSLA will do stick and the planks and there we have our screwdriver and there's a thing called an angular transducer uh, which is this thing uh, and they've made that significantly easier it used to take an ender pearl uh, but it looks like they've reduced that recipe a little bit cool so this will tell us how fast things are spinning and this one lets us sort of choose which sides of things uh, stuff comes out of. Now we're also going to need some of these conduits to, to power this. Uh, what I might do is let's just get a not that one bucket because under here there's that so we can grab our lava back out. Uh, we need to grab the things out of there. Uh, grab that. Excellent. And now if we tunnel under here, there we go, Ender IO conduits. So what we can do with this is we can get our conduit coming out and then what I might do is just come out. How many have I got? Two left. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. That's completely the wrong thing. Let's just get those. So we'll do that. And now I need some. So I like everything to look all nice again. So we'll just grab some standard stone and throw that back in like that. Now let's throw our engine down. Let's see what happens. So I'm not sure. It looks like it comes out this side, uh, which means if we line up our grinder here no i think the green side is input so this is where we need to have our screwdriver and as we click there we go green for that side now this is hooked up to that so what i need to do then is i can say redstone control speed torque excellent so how much does the so this can only go as high as that only two kilowatts now this is where we might come completely unstuck because the grinder actually needs 128 newton meters of torque except our output speed can be accepted to choose the total power 
So it can give us output, but we're not using any power. Everything is full. It's the control. You know, it says it's going to be spinning, but I'm not getting any RF into it. So the RF must have to come into the back of it. Okay, so pickaxe should be able to pick those up. That's good. Did I get both of them? All right, so we are going to have to change the way this works a little bit. So I'm going to need my... Oh, where did I put it? Must be in here somewhere. Ah, there it is. The, the Yeda wrench. And now... I can put it there, which means I can put the engine down in front. There we go. So it's spinning and we're using a tiny, tiny bit of power actually. That's that's not too bad. Uh, now the problem with this is it's only got 8 newton meters of torque, so this is probably not actually going to be enough. Hmm. Well, that's going to be very interesting. Let's, uh, let's put the, uh, lava back in there. Let's remove that there and put this in there. Coal and the sand can all go back in there. Excellent. That gets that out of the way. So yeah, this is going to be interesting. We're going to need four kilowatts and at least 128 newton meters of torque, which is just not going to be enough for us. So what we can do here is we can use another device in line with this. So this is now going to be good to produce our power. Uh, let's just throw those back in there, but we're going to need another device uh, in the middle here. So what we can do with that is there should be, actually, let's look under here. Uh, it's called a spring of some description. Um, let's just look up all rotary, rotary car stuff and see if I can see it in the list of things. So there's a thing that lets you store the angular energy. Oh, we've got four pages to look through. This could take a while. So we've got a, yeah, maybe it's the flywheel. Maybe it's the flywheel. Uh, actually, no, I think the flywheel doesn't store the energy. That just, uh, it's close, but not quite what we're looking for. There is a, maybe it's called a coil of some sort. Industrial coil. That is what we need, the industrial coil. So this means that you can store uh, some stuff. So that's what it looks like. Let's look in the book and see what it says about the industrial coil. Now that we know what it looks like, uh, not like that. Industrial coil, there we go. Stores energy in a large spring that then can be unwound on command with redstone. So this is where we need to make this. So we need a mount, we need a shaft core, and then we need a, a tension coil. So the tension coil can either be, well, different sorts of tension coil and the brake disc. So what's the brake disc and the mount? Okay. Now I think from memory, the mount is made just like, no, it's not. But I do think we need more of these. Maybe it's, Okay, how about I look it up? So the mount is made, ah, <laughs> like that. So we need a mount. There's our mount. Uh, what else do we need? We need a brake disc, which is made with, oh, a bunch of stuff. Okay, so this is where we need another steel gear. We need a shaft bearing. Wow, so we're going to need a lot of things. So let's get some bearings. We're going to need uh, some steel gears just to make this brake disc. Wow. 
So that needs two shafts and two gears. So I think we can go like that and then do the shafts and the gears. Two times gear unit. Excellent. So that's what we need. Oops. Uh, and then so it's two times gear unit, the gear. We need two more shaft units and a shaft bearing. Now the bearing is pretty easy. It's just that with a bunch of these around. So there's the shaft bearing. Uh, we're going to need some more of those. Wow, this brake disc certainly takes a bit. So the two times gear, the bearing, and the gear. So there's the bearing, the gear, the two times, and these rods on each side. And there's our brake disc, which is excellent. Uh, now we just need the shaft core, which is pretty easy to make. We've got two of those left over. There's the shaft core. And then, this is the tricky bit, this is where we need to make the tension coil. So we've either got that tension coil or the bedrock tension coil. So the tension coil is made with a uh, shaft unit and some wind springs. The wind springs, wow, this is going to take a lot. So we're going to need eight wind springs. Uh, out of interest, the bedrock takes, wow, a lot of stuff. We're not going to be making one of those in a hurry. So uh, let's just make the normal tension coil. We need eight of these, which means eight times four is... 32, I believe. So there we go. There's, um, oh, they don't stack either. Haha. <laughs> well, that's kind of annoying. Okay, so we're going to need to drop off uh, all of this stuff again. Um, that can go in there. The bucket can go back. The wood can go back. The sticks can go back. Uh, the one piece of energy conduit can go back. Uh, the ball bearings can go away. And now we need enough room for the eight of these that we want to make. Wow. Cool. So there we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then one of these in the middle, surrounded by eight. What a pain this is, having to do them one piece at a time. Ah, oh, you know what? What have we done wrong? It's around a shaft unit. Okay. <laughs> Let's try this instead. Hooray, attention coil. Cool. So, and now what we need to do is go back to the work table and do the tension coil, the brake disc, the shaft core, and the mount underneath, and we have our industrial coil. So what we can do with the industrial coil is we can throw this here. Green is input, red is output, so that should be fine to go into there. And now we need to do the grinder, which we can do that. Green is input. Uh, we can now Turn this on, and we need to output torque. So we need for the grinder 4096. Oh, and the maximum is. Oh, sorry, the torque is 128 for that. 128. The output speed needs to be something to give it four times. So the speed needs to be, this is where we have to do a little bit of maths. So we have 8, 32. So we need 32 at least. So let's go for 32. And now what we need is that's powering up. We need a lever, uh, which means we need uh, that stick again. So we can go that stick. This is just my way of getting a redstone signal into this. There we go. Perfect. And it seems to be powering this. So now all we need to do is get some canola seeds. So up over here, I did have a bunch of canola seeds. So let's get 64 of those. There we go. That's still running. Put the canola seeds in there. And now, hopefully, when we switch this, the stored energy comes out. 
we're hitting the right power, the right speed, and the right torque for this. So that is perfectly what we need. So we need 128 newton meters of torque, and we need 32 rads per second, and that will give us the 4,096 watts of power that we need because you just you multiply these two together uh, to get the power. So when we look in the in the book at the uh, production, uh, where are we? Yeah, processing machines, the grinder. The grinder just says it, it needs that much power and that much torque. It doesn't say what speed it needs, uh, but you can work it out by basically taking that number, divide by 128, and you end up with the, the 32 rad a second that you need. So now we can look at this. We can turn this off to let it store some more power. 65, look at that. We have our first little bit of lubricant in there. So this is going to take a little while. We're going to need to keep storing this up uh, and outputting it. But once we have our lubricant, we can actually move on and stop using this machine with the industrial coil. We can start using gear units and things like that. And the gear units can uh, rank up the speed. So this here can only produce the 8 newton meters of torque um, with the speed 256. So we can't get enough to run the grinder directly off this. The grinder directly will be... You know, it needs 100. It needs 128 newton meters, and only. I mean, the speed could be 32 or above. Uh, and as you can see, this is only two kilowatts, which is only half, half what the grinder actually needs. So, run that for a bit more. We should have enough stored to do another bit. It looks like we're getting 65. So we get out of the next one, see if we get the same. Ah, oh, not quite enough. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, you're going to have to leave this to store up. I don't know if there's a way of uh, checking. Maybe the angular transducer stored energy. There we go, down the bottom, 18, 19. So it's telling us how much energy is stored there. Uh, the angular transducer can let us know. So this will hopefully let us know before it goes bang. Uh, the thing with these gears, the industrial coils, is they do go bang. That's that's one of the problems with them. So you need to be very, very, very careful. Uh, the machine cannot charge and release. It must power. So the tension spring should be able to tell us how much it stores wherever they are. There you go, wine spring. Alright, All right. well I know that there is a maximum. Oh, there's a an error there. I don't know what that error is. My handbook. Huh. My handbook caused an error. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I now just have to be very, very careful that I don't overwind this. So this is now discharging, discharging, discharging. And it's nearly discharged enough to do a single one. Oh, look at that, 161. So we get a variable amount each time. So that's now winding down. So I need to let that charge for a bit and let this build up to... I don't know what I got to last time, maybe 150 kilojoules. So it's going to take me a little while, but once we get our first, uh, once we get our first bucket of lubricant, we can actually start doing something a bit more exciting with this uh, and get the uh, and get our grinder working in a slightly different way. So there is a uh, a steam engine uh, which produces enough power for us. It, it produces 16 kilowatts of power. Now it does have a much higher speed and a lower torque than what we need so we're going to actually need to pass that through a gear system to to get our grinder working but once we get that gear system working uh, we'll have more than enough power from a steam engine to run the grinder properly and then we can just generate lubricant without having to do this the storing malarkey that we're doing right now uh, so I think that's going to be it for this episode I oh it's only using a tiny bit of RF as well which is fantastic so um, I'm going to cut this right here. We've got our lubricant happening, albeit very slowly. Uh, and there we go, 140, 150, click. 
that should be enough. All right, so uh, next episode, I'll come back and hopefully we will do the next step of this, which is to to get our canola grinding without this uh, industrial coil. Uh, but for now, I think that was a good place enough to stop. So uh, as always, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.